So one of our long-time fans has sent me an idea for a decent way to get a cutout organised without too much fuss. Our long-time fan, Diane, over in WA, who's become an accomplished beekeeper in her own right now, has been going through one of her friend's old beekeeping, well, deceased estates, I guess, beekeeping deceased estates. And she sent me this cutout frame idea, which was from, I'm going to try and pronounce, but I'm just going to say it was from Murray, because I don't know. Murray's frame, worth. Worthington. Worthington, there you go, my eyes are a bit wonky donk, but anyway. So Murray Worthington came up with this idea, which I thought was pretty bloody brilliant. So you, obviously you get your bit of wire, you can lay your cutout in here, put your rubber bands on the front. This idea avoids that complication of when you're doing a cutout and you have your actual honey frame and you've got the wires in here already, your actual bloom and brood frame sits outside here. This idea is going to let it be nice and square. I think the ladies are going to have a little bit of trouble carting that out of the hive, that wire, but going forward you'll eventually swap that out, put it upstairs and it'll be, you know, like cycled out if that's the word. So let's have a go. This is going to be the Bush Bee Man's version of Diane's mate Murray's cutout frame. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Try to say that ten times fast. So I was wandering around the hardware store trying to find some wire for my project. And of course, being the Bush Bee Man, I saw this jolly roll of stuff that is similar to what Murray used. And I thought that was $57. And so the bloke nearly fell off a perch. And then I was wandering along a little bit further and I found this garden edging. And I thought, heck, that'll probably do the job. So apologies, Murray, although you're actually in, in heaven anyway, so you're not going to have to get too offended. Apologies, Diane, I am trying to do the right thing. But, you know, there's only so many ways you can make the dollar stretch. I thought it was kind of cool anyway, because it would give you bigger gaps for the girls to work through. So hopefully, hopefully it's a successful exercise, except it's a little bit hard to get flattened out. <laughs> so I've got myself some frames without any wires. And of course, the first thing I'm going to have to do is cut it the right size. So I figure if I cut it a little bit further, then I can lap that bit around there and staple it on. Actually, that's even better. Maybe, maybe I could do that. <gasps> John, what a thought thought bubble. Isn't that what they have at these um, you know, conferences? It's called a thought bubble when you come up with an idea. Oh, there's terminologies for everything, isn't there? Anyway, we're just going to cut this bit off here. Do, 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 my trusty pair of pliers. Actually, I'm tipping there my wife's trusty pair of pliers because they're a bit cute for me to be having out here in the farm. But anyway, don't tell her, okay? It's an ongoing secret. <laughs> it's like the screwdriver set now. I'm stealing pliers as well and everything else. <laughs> Someone was asking me the other day how I'm still alive after taking all my wife's stuff. And I said, oh, it's just because she's a graceful soul. That's what it is. A graceful soul. <laughs> so I figure we'll just trim this top bit off here. No expense spared here in the garden lining. What do you reckon I can make that for a pixie garden? We might just keep all our little bit of fences and we can... We could put that in the railway setup that Nan's got for little Penelope. Or we could be really miserable and just make some extra ones out of those ones. But let's not get too lousy. Golly gosh. Right, so the next plan I've got in my head is we're going to try and stress it around the corner a little bit. So I'll put that around there. Is that one going to be long enough? That end. Like that and that and that and that. I stole the wife's little staple gun, so you can use that, but I'm going to use an air staple gun. But either will work. We might do one of either way, just, just to prove it. Our figure, what we're going to do first, and we'll get that there. You can sit over the edge so we can get a flat spot. And we'll get this up this end so we can get it started to get a bit of tension on it. We'll put the staple in here. Lordy, lordy, lordy. Don't stick it through your finger. Otherwise that would not end well. Bloody hell. I think I got that crooked. Anyway, next one. Just ignore that, all right? <laughs> Let's just try that again. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> Trial and error, I think they say. So we just want to get our long, our longer tails. So we'll trim this bit off here. 
doesn't have to be super precise anyway, but just a little bit square would be good. Otherwise the girls will say, who put this blooming crooked thing in our hive? What's going on? Is that Bush Bee Man being back here again? Jolly mischief maker he is. Let's just try to get it square. That would be a good idea. Instead of being such a blooming ruffian. We want this bit to go over the top. So maybe we'll try that first to get it. So then I, that's what I had wrong last time. It was gone all crooked off. Is that, is that some sort of language, crooked off? I don't think it is. But anyway, I think if we'll start at the base. Go around there. And around this way. We probably should have made a few prototypes before you were filming, I reckon. That might have been a good idea. But where would be the fun in that? And then we'll trim off this top bit, because that's going to lap around there. So we'll trim that bit off. Get another little bit of railway fence. Would we trim it square? What do you think? Could probably, actually, it's probably long enough to do that. Oh, making this up as we're filming, I tell you what. I'll be like some of those other YouTube channels where there's that blip and you know they've recut it so they've made it look better. But not us, not us, we're here warts and all. Let me know if Fib's told. Right, so, oh, don't pull it too hard. So you want to get a bit of tension on the bit that's trying to pull straight. And we're going to put a staple across the top. Make sure it's sort of in a bit. So we'll put one in here. Try not to lose a finger. Otherwise that'll put a damper on the project. We'll be up the hospital for the rest of the day. God, just going blind is an ordinary arrangement. I don't know whether I like it or not. Well, yeah, I know I don't like it actually. It's a bit like going deaf. Although going deaf's got its advantages because then you can say, what, didn't hear you. What do you mean I'm supposed to clean up my room? Or pick up my socks. <laughs> okay, so we're going here. Thought. Very good. We'll trim this off so we haven't got too many crazy bits. Right, so we got a little bit of little bit going on there. There's a bit of tension happening. And we'll just go so we can square it up a bit. If we need to pull that a bit, do you reckon? How tight does it need to be? Doesn't need to be too crazy, I wouldn't have thought. We can't get too crazy yet anyway, because we haven't got the other end hooked down. Oh! Maybe this should be comedy beekeeping with the bush bee man, right? <laughs> oh, some of the stuff that goes on around here. Still. I thought this was a brilliant idea anyway, because when we first started out doing cutouts, we had jolly bits of string. And then someone got all excited and said, oh, you should use some rubber bands. And that was a quantum leap forward. And then when Diane sent me this idea, I thought, wow, that's even better again. It's funny how you don't, sometimes you just don't think about all these simple ideas. So we thought we'd better share it with you because it's pretty blooming cool, I reckon. Mind you, I haven't actually done a cutout with them yet, so. But it, the principle looks amazing, so even... Well, I suppose if you don't see this episode, you'll know it didn't really work. <laughs> no, of course it's going to work. It's going to be incredible. And then everybody can share their own experience of making these things. Oh! oh. Ooh, it says, hello, I'm nearly going to be a bee's home. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Rightio! Very good. Well, I don't know. That looks pretty good, I reckon. Probably not quite to the plan, but it looks alright to me. I was going to do it when we get up there. If I took my pair of pliers, I figured I could cut my wire at the right spot. 
Although I'm thinking it'll sit in there anyway without the wire grips. Look at me going, I haven't even used the jolly thing and I'm already changing the rules. I've got the wrong wire, I'm not even going to have the hooky up bits. Oh, I don't know. Do you think we need to do that bit? I think it's alright because I think it's just going to sit in there anyway. And then the rubber band will hold it and then the girls will hook it all together. Look at that. Right, now all I've got to do is make a few more. Yeah. Anyway, there we go, we've got our wire on our frames. Now the last piece of the puzzle is our rubber band. So we're gonna lay our brood frame in here. When we do the cutout, and you just slip your rubber band over the top of it. And there you have it, like that. And there'll be a few of them along. And hopefully, we'll hold it all together. Slip it in our new bee box. Hey presto, we're the cutout heroes. Well, I don't know, we haven't tried it out yet, but the theory looks good. So I reckon we'll give it a crack and go. Thanks for that idea, Diane. You're a champion. And young Murray, I tell you what, the things that are shared between the beekeeping world is incredible. And I reckon we need more. If you have a fascinating idea out there in the beekeeping land and you'd like it shared across the internet, well, maybe send me and send it to me at Box 1127 Loxton and you never know, you might make the show. And next week, we'll give it a crack implementing this. The wife's sick of the fish tank on the veranda, so we're gonna have a go at doing a cutout and putting a flow hive on her veranda so she's not really 100% sure whether she's committed to this project but at the minute she's out with a grandchild so we're all good so hopefully we can hose the veranda off before the bloody honey and stuff is oh god last time we were up there we had a hell of a mess so maybe we'll take a tart with us yeah maybe we won't but anyway you'll find out tune in next time and don't forget like clip subscribe and all that stuff that goes out there Thank you.